They made a documentary? Dude, they are so well funded, it's crazy. Those answers? We'll find a way to end wokeism once and for all. <laughs> So much of the talk around woke seems to be just that, talk. At the end of the day, nothing will change if those of us who- I love the conservative movement doing consumer activism and like spending a lot of time, energy, and ourselves. initiatives on consumer but activism. To understand what can be done about it, we need to understand the world in which it originated. It's so funny. They're literally like, uh, what can be, what can be done about woke commodities? Um, that's right. You have to just buy our shit instead. Ooh, it happens to be the exact same shit, except with a markup. It's called a stupid tax. That's what people are calling it. From the people that brought you pink tax, we've decided we are going to do an idiot tax. If you want to buy the exact same shit, it's even worse quality for a higher markup. Come and purchase it from us instead. The middlemen. Awesome. I hate it. My first stop was to talk to the man who literally wrote the book on woke. Here we are in Columbus, Ohio. Big L. The first questions, what is wokeism? And where did it come from? Hi, Vivek. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Meet Vivek Ramaswamy. He recently founded Strive Asset Management, an investment management firm that's challenging industry titans like BlackRock and Vanguard. He's doing it the old fashioned way, focusing his investment decisions on excellence. <laughs> They're like, we hate BlackRock and Vanguard. So we chose to br make our own BlackRock, but this time races. over politics. But before Strive, he founded a multi-billion dollar biotech company called Royvent Sciences. They were literally working to cure cancer. Until, at the height of Black Lives Matter, his board and employees demanded Vivek speak out in full support of the organization and the movement. Wait, are you telling me that this dude was on the cusp of curing cancer? And then his employees were like, hey, Black Lives Matter. And he was like, no, fuck that. We're done. <laughs> like, what kind of argument is this? Let's say it's real for a brief moment. Let's just suspend our disbelief and think that this is a real story that happened. Why would that actually make the dude that you're presenting look any better? Like, he's just like, yeah, man. It's actually the Black Lives Matter protest that stopped me from curing cancer because I got pissed off that they were advocating for the black employees. Like, okay, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. You're a horrible person. And he couldn't get back to work and cure cancer right now. With a clear conscience. But I stepped down as so he Oh my God, he stepped down. <laughs> like it wasn't even like, uh, we're going to do a struggle session here. And, and, and it got in the way of cancer research or whatever. He just straight up was like, what? Black lives matter. They don't matter. I'm stepping down. Fuck cancer. He left the company that he created. Because of this experience, Vivek wrote a book you might have heard of called Woke Inc. Yeah, dude, this kind of stuff always comes out later down the line. Like, I don't know what the fuck this dude's deal is. But I wouldn't be shocked if it was like he was sexually harassing the fucking, uh, you know, uh, college freshman interns that they had or some shit. And then he fucking stepped down for that reason. But then he was like, oh, it's because everyone's so woke. <laughs> I love this story, though. I love the story that they've presented. Not saying that that's definitely what happened, but usually that is what happens. But I love the story that he presented, that he was no longer interested in curing cancer because Black Lives Matter. Like, how uncommitted were you to the cause of curing cancer that you dropped it, like, on a fucking dime because of the, you know, because of the Black Lives Matter protest? Why do you think this makes you look good? That's another question I have. I, I don't get it. Yes, I know. This is Squeaks running for president. I think a lot of people... At first, I thought he looked like Squeaks, but the more I see him, the more I realize he doesn't actually look like Squeaks. I was just being racist. People are going to hear that and go, what's woke? Mm -hmm. So, Vivek, what, what's woke? Yeah, wokeness refers to being alert to invisible injustices perpetuated against disempowered classes of... Oh, God, I'm so mad. Oh, no, what? ...people, generally defined on ge genetically inherited characteristics like race, gender, and sexual orientation basically borrows from the tropes of Marxism, which was this 
oppressor oppressed narrative. But wokeism was really, was not just Marxism, it was the merger of Marxism with identity politics. The idea that you are nothing more and nothing less than the genetic stock that you inherit on the day you're born. So, so, so that, that's what you sort of refer to as the trend of modern wokeness. Okay. Now, this is a fringe philosophy. I mean, this was a theory from, from the halls of academia. And it was a challenge to the system. It was an interesting set of ideas. Does it mean it was all coherent? No, not necessarily. But it was interesting. It was provocative. It was a different way of looking at human relations. It was an interesting worldview in some classroom at some, some liberal arts university somewhere. Mm -hmm. But wokeness at some point moved from being about being a challenge to the system to becoming Oh, he's like one of those he's like one of those guys. He's one of those guys who's like, oh, wokeness was fine, you know, when it was like the civil rights movement. But now it's not fine because somehow it got out of control. So to really understand the origin story of wokeism, you have to understand academia first. That's where it was born. It was born as an infant there. It became Franklin an adolescent school. somewhere else, but let's start with the infancy. Franklin school. Say the Jews did it. At the end of the day, the rise of wokeism wasn't an overnight phenomenon. It's actually been in the works for years. So like many bad ideas, wokeism started in academia. But why? And why did Why are they not saying it's the Frankfurt School? We know that's what you want to say. Just say it, man. And it stay in the ivory tower. How did this cancer infect every other area of society? I needed to talk to somebody who understood academia and from a long-term, multifaceted perspective. And so I traveled to Washington, D.C. I love that, like, conservative commentary now straight up is just like, if you're educated, you're learning to be a homosexual Marxist and it's bad. Please stop getting educated. Do not, do not read. Do not read. Stop reading. Stop going to school. It's bad for you. I promise it's not good. It's no good. School is no bueno. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. Education is really bad. Really, really bad, actually. Please stop educating yourselves. To talk to a visionary who did something many people consider to be impossible. He founded a new college that now rivals the Ivy League. This is Michael Ferris. He started Wait, Patrick what? Henry College, a classical liberal arts college just outside of Washington, D.C. In only 20 years of the college's existence, Patrick Henry graduates have become leaders in the highest halls of power, including Congress, Hollywood, and the White House. And this sort of cultural impact was by design. Ferris has been fighting wokeism before it was even called. This motherfucker, it's required you're stupid to believe this stuff? Yeah. This motherfucker literally went and made a liberal arts university, but like even more filled to the brim with like fucking nepotist uh, uh, fail children. Affirmative action for conservatives? Yeah, literally, dude. What the fuck? Hey, man. If you're rich, white, and conservative, we have affirmative, a affirmative action programs for you. Don't worry. Like, we got this college. Called wokeism. And more importantly, he's been winning. And I dare anyone to read my legal analysis. Through Patrick Henry College. Dude, oh, God. Look at this Vox.com ass fucking Cold editing there. Look at this. And more importantly. They put a, they put a, a, a thug hat. And the and the thug life glasses on him. Look, winning. and I dare anyone to read my legal analysis. Oh, dude, he's it's thug life, bro. This seventy six year old pervert is winning. He's thug life, dude. He fucking built a wasp academy, <laughs> bro. He said, "I dare you to read my legal analysis." That is the least thug life moment of all time. Okay. He literally did, actually, um, please read my legal analysis. And you're like, oh, fucking sick, dude. Fucking own. Get wrecked, libtards. This dude, this dude is like the first case of an adult that needs to be stuffed into a fucking locker, okay? Through Patrick Henry College, Mike is taking the battle against woke to the source by educating new generations of students in a rigorous, truth-focused education. Where do you think wokeness <laughs> started? What's your, what's your theory there? Where I was seeing it mostly was in the schools of education. They were... At least Patrick Henry College is, like, doing one good thing, which is that, like, if you have these fucking millionaire, billionaire, wasp, fail sons, um, at least taking them out of other colleges so they can only do date to other billionaire, millionaire, fail daughters is, like, in some respects, you know, from a utilitarian perspective, of course, a little bit better. You know what I mean? Like... 
taking these guys and and um and and putting them in a, in a pen with one another is ultimately getting them away from the broader society. Think about it. It makes sense. Don't they feel dumb just saying wokeism all the time? No, they don't. They are dumb. They are very dumb. Teaching that there is no truth, but what they meant is we're going to undermine the objective truth that you believe in and pretend that all truth is relative. And we're going to follow that up eventually with our truth. And that idea is now we're going to jam our truth down your throat and you better kneel. You raise a generation that's told at the university that nobody can disagree with you. You take that attitude to campus. No, that's a really bad take. Damn. Wait, what? What's a really bad take? You think it's funny when I talk about the Florida policy, but when I uh, hammer it in for, for just a university, for a liberal arts college, you get mad? I'm not saying it's not going to. We need to start to bully, start to bully people for being right wing weirdos instead of bullying them for being a minority. Like, what do you what do you mean? No, you don't like it because it is it's an edgy joke, okay? But if you investigate the the bearings of the joke itself, you will understand it. You think that's the way the whole world should be like, and that's what you believe. That's the way you were trained, and you, you will not be a friend of truth. Uh. You will not be a friend of freedom. You're going to be a friend of repressing anybody who doesn't follow the party line. The tyranny that's in place today believes that the heart, soul, and mind of man belongs to government. And that mantra has been taken up by big corporations and social media giants and so on. And that totalitarian impulse is the opposite of liberty or progressivism or anything, any of the, the traditional meanings of those terms. Mm -hmm. uh, our country was a liberal democracy. We're fast becoming a totalitarian, bureaucratically run country, not a democracy, yeah. not a republic. No, definitely. Except for like when right. the photos that you were pointing to, that's the funniest part. Like when you were pointing to photos of like anything, when we were a democracy, a real democracy of liberty or with like George Washington and shit like dog. That was when America was infinitely less a democracy. Okay. Those guys were slave owners, man. That's crazy. That's crazy that you're looking at that and going, oh, like, oh, the fucking Dude, look how democratic it was back then when uh, the country was run as it's intended by white male slave owners. Uh, what the fuck? Really weird of you challenge to defend fail son rapists. See, I can do it too. I can be weirdly uncharitable and miss the point of what you're saying. Everyone can do it. We just don't do it because it's annoying. Progressivism or anything, any of the, the traditional meanings of those terms. Mm -hmm. uh, our country was a liberal democracy. We're fast becoming a totalitarian, bureaucratically. You said our country was a liberal democracy. There's no black people in the photos. It's like one woman. I wonder why. I wonder why there's no black people in the photos and only one woman. In the photos. Perhaps maybe those guys were not a part of the democracy that you're talking about. Country, not a democracy and not a republic. We need to walk, we need to march, we need to shout. Transgender rights are one of the most important civil rights movements of our lifetime. We can enact change in this country. What is, oh, it's so scary. I can't believe AOC said we can enact change in our country. I can't believe they said transgender civil rights is one of the most important civil movements of our time. That's so scary. That's scary. So you teach a generation that truth is subjective and ever evolving. You brainwash them to accept no alternative viewpoints. It's the woke way or no way. And then you release them into every industry of our society. Yeah. Every that acts like truth is objective buckles like a like just absolutely folds the moment that you start investigating deeper into what they believe and why they believe it the moment that you like arrive at the conclusion that like oh it's because the bible said so you go okay that's your personal interpretation and you understand how fucking subjective their truth is you know what i mean it's the jordan peterson conundrum jordan peterson does this shit all the time he loves back when he was like at least larping as a liberal he loved trying to use the Bible as the objective truth while simultaneously saying it's just simply uh, a, a understanding of the, of the symbolism within the Bible. Like, understand, like our, our universe is, is uh, dictated by the same principles that keep reinforcing itself uh, in our art and in our culture and in you know, religious dogma as well. Perhaps the most pernicious infiltration? 
the indoctrination tool for the masses, entertainment. Oh man. For years, everyday Americans have complained about woke Hollywood. Yeah, totally. That's what, that's what Americans are always complaining about. But we're not here to complain. We want to create alternatives. So I decided to talk to a man who is doing just that, creating an alternative to Hollywood and multiple other industries. And her views. That is not. Oh my god! Wait, that's not the man we're talking. It's, this is the. This will never not be funny. You know how we make fun of uh, people on TikTok for having fake podcasts. Brett Cooper has a fake Twitch stream where she acts like she is doing a Twitch stream when she's not. They just shoot it in a fucking studio. It is mind-boggling to me that people just think like, "Oh no, this is great." <laughs> Meet Jeremy Boring. Jeremy is the co-founder of a media and entertainment company called The Daily Wire. They push buttons, they tell the truth, and they're working every day to create both news and entertainment that is free from global bias. In many ways, big media has become just a propaganda arm of the left. And Daily Wire- Media has always been a propaganda arm. The left, not so much. I wanted to correct that. Welcome back to the comments. We produce written articles, news articles. We produce podcasts. We're the fifth largest podcast publisher in the world. But beyond the Daily Wire, we've expanded into something we're calling Daily Wire Plus. And it's really a broader cultural. Yeah, it's a cultural revolution, folks. Like when we hired Gina Carano and then put her in a movie and then filmed that movie. And then that movie got uh, an opening weekend to 800 people watching it. That was the biggest cultural revolution. Man, if I took a shit and fucking uploaded to my Instagram, that'd be a bigger cultural revolution by, this, by, by your metrics of success, okay? What the fuck? Entertainment play. We're making movies. We're making television shows. Probably be more interesting, too. You can understand. You can develop a better understanding of my diet. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers made, like, $100 in the box office. <laughs> we're making kids entertainment, which I think is probably the most important fight we will ever take on. They've also started making some pretty awesome products that offer an alternative to woke companies and other industries as well. Jeremy's Razors is a consumer goods alternative to companies like Gillette and Harry's Razors who have all publicly embraced the LGBT agenda and not just the LGBT agenda, the radical gender theory being pushed on children. Daily Wire Plus, a million plus paying subscribers right now. Yeah, children who famously shave with Harry's Razors. So Jeremy's dumb. Razors, we have sold over 100,000 Razor subscriptions. I think all of that is because the half of the country that up until now has been divided by nothing. They've had no alternatives whatsoever, are eager and hungry to engage with those alternatives when they're presented, especially if we're not exploiting them, if we're actually providing value to them, then I think that there's an enormous opportunity to succeed. I think it's great, man. I do. Like, these guys are literally farming the dumbest motherfuckers with disposable income, okay? They're literally selling the same nonsense, the same exact product with a markup. If you're stupid enough to go out and buy this exact same product, like go out of your way and do something like this, I don't know what to tell you. You, you got got, and you are stupid enough to get got, and you kind of deserve it. Hollywood going woke is pretty easy to see coming, but what happened next, no one expected. Sports went woke. <laughs> See that guy standing while everyone else is kneeling? That's Jonathan Isaac. He plays for the Orlando Magic in the NBA. He also happened to be one of the few NBA players who publicly expressed discomfort with supporting the Black Lives Matter movement. This all came to a head when the players on his team decided to collectively kneel during the national anthem. So he did what he felt was right. He stood. Now, Jonathan is launching his own apparel company called United. Okay, so we saw this part, which was really stupid. The story the NSYNC. What? With them was but it didn't end in sports. We all know the story. It felt like the flip of a switch, like every company in America was suddenly spouting the woke orthodoxy, and anyone who disagreed with them was ousted, condemned, and silenced. 
a perfect example? Dude, I wish, man. Where? Like, I wish we could silence some of you motherfuckers, man. You never shut the fuck up. Where did the conservative movement get silenced? Like, I want to live there, brother. That's where I want to be. I want to be at the place where the conservatives actually are silenced. Oh my fucking lord, dude. They never shut up. Like, you can't fucking say we are silenced while you simultaneously talk to the Daily Wire guy who's like, we're the fifth largest podcast network on the planet. Okay? God damn, dude. Yeah, I mean, China. China is a place where the conservative movement is silenced. Only the, only the, the CCP-approved conservatism is allowed. And there's some conservatism there, too, you know what I mean? Amanda Ensing. Who's Amanda Ensing? Who the fuck is this? The culture and the environment, but they don't do anything. We need to be creating our own verticals and our own. It's so funny. It's like every time, every time they do like an alternative, it, it literally is like a shittier version of something that exists already. It's like, oh, do you want Ariana Grande? But like Ariana fucking Venti, dude, here, here you go. Like, there you go. It's like, no, no one wants Ariana Venti. You want Ariana Grande? Like, shut the fuck up. It's so stupid. And the entire point is this, okay? The entire point is this. If these people can make it on the, the virtue of, like, their content working in and of itself, they wouldn't have to fucking literally go and, and uh, do this dumb shit. Their vector wouldn't be politics, right-wing politics specifically, but politics in general, okay? Myself included. If I could be a fucking funny man and rest on the laurels of my humor, I wouldn't be talking about this politics shit, okay? Just kidding. I unfortunately am brain dead enough to love politics a little too much, but Fem Shapiro was created after you? Yeah, I mean, this is real. The TPUSA presentation notes, uh, Hassan the Hun is content inspiration for Twitch streaming. Hassan is currently live reacting to Trump's appearance on the Nelk Boys podcast. Yeah. Yeah, these guys see it. They see it. They probably also see the three-minute ad break at the top of the hour because they're not fucking subscribing. But you should. Sephora took away her brand deal because they learned about her beliefs, which caused conservatives to boycott Sephora. Conservatives boycotted Sephora. Didn't even know that that happened. Wait, where the fuck were we always? <laughs> what is that? Is she pregnant? This is Amanda Ensing. She's an entrepreneur, a beauty influencer, and a general badass boss lady. She started out beauty influencing with sponsorships from Sephora and other huge makeup brands. But when armchair critics started criticizing Amanda for stating her personal political beliefs, Sephora immediately canceled her. Cutting ties with pro-Trump beauty influencer Amanda Ensing? Yeah, man. It's Sephora. Yeah, they're making a business decision. Hey, guess what? You want to know why no one fucking heard about this Sephora boycott? Because conservatives were already boycotting Sephora by not being, like, gay men or girls who go to Sephora. Okay? If the barbs boycotted Sephora, now that's when you got a, a labor action, okay? That's when you got momentum. If the barbs were to boycott Sephora for one reason or, the no or another, then they got no fucking workers left, okay? Tomorrow, they're done. Their entire labor force is wiped out. What fucking, like, Trump supporter is, is, is going to Sephora and be like, yeah, I can't wait to get me some of them cat eyes. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I love me some of them. I love me that, that eyeliner. Is, they call it guy liner. It's fine, brother. Her sponsorships and went so far as to publicly condemn Amanda. So for me, I was like, you know what? The beauty industry is in shambles. It only caters to one party, one set of views. Let's create my own brand. Our first launch sold out within like a day or two. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> they, they shouldn't. Those shades are way too. Those shades are way too dark for your fan base, lady. Okay, <laughs> their her skincare goes up to like her her uh her concealer goes up to only like white and palest white. I was just like, how what? And just seeing how much women wanted this, I was like, wow. And I was scared, you know, it's terrifying putting your story out there. And when you get canceled and with all of these people now coming for me, 
it is, it's, it's scary at first to take that first leap, but once you do, you just don't stop. The alternative to people not creating these businesses is way worse than if you would take that leap of faith. Because I, I, I Do you know how she got canceled? No. I don't. Because I don't know who the fuck she is. I thought she was a singer. Until this video. I don't know who she is. I have no idea. And I will forget about her as soon as this video is over. I don't think a lot of people realize how willing Americans are to support you. Like we are desperate for new brands and new companies. America needs alternatives. Oh, and if you haven't already guessed, every single one of the people we interviewed is a perfect example of not just what fighting back looks like, but what winning looks like. Yeah, they're literally just like, <clears throat> they're just straight up like, oh man, we just, all of these institutions are liberal. Let's make competitive ones by just saying that these are not woke. That's it. Except like you have an avenue to work in those institutions. You just can't cut it because you don't got what it takes. It's not like conservatives don't exist in Hollywood. Of course they do. There's plenty of fucking conservative people in Hollywood. You just don't hear them chirping nonstop because they haven't made being conservative their personality until they're like really fucking old. Harrison Ford, Clint Eastwood, not Harrison Ford, sorry, Clint Eastwood, uh, Angelina Jolie's dad. Kevin Sorbo, Tim Allen, Mel Gibson. I'll give you one of the insights from my investing days. It's a famous quote from Warren Buffett. Be brave where others are fearful. Okay, so first of all, Warren Buffett woke. Um, secondly, if this guy is like investing in companies purely on the fundamentals, okay, and not like uh, purely on the fundamentals and not actually on like what their corporate brand's uh, strategy is, which by the way, I laugh at any fucking donkey-brained idiot who thinks that, like, BlackRock Capital is actually focusing on how woke a company is and not what their fucking... not what their returns are, okay? But, like, if he's only looking at the fundamentals, then wouldn't he be straight up only investing in established brands? He's talking about Warren Buffett, for example. Like, that's Mr. Coca-Cola. That's Mr. Safety. Warren Buffett's entire fucking portfolio resembles like the most i mean it's the fortune 500 you know what i mean so 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 doesn't that mean you're going to be doing the same thing so you're just trying to be so you're just trying to be fucking blackrock because i'm willing to bet this motherfucker is not investing in like the the anti-woke sephora or whatever the fuck if he's only caring about the fundamentals there's an economic opportunity i think it might be one of the biggest economic opportunities of the next decade to serve the hundred million plus Americans. Also, yeah, BlackRock right, and yeah, BlackRock and Vanguard don't invest based on stuff like that anyway. Disaffected from the places where they work, where they shop, where they bank, where they invest. These are also. I just don't think anyone cares. Like, I don't think, I don't think liberals have ever been like, "Oh man, I'm so glad Bank of America loves homosexuals." You know what I mean? Like, that's the difference. These guys are literally like, oh, dude, we have a banking system, but like, if you're gay, we call you the F word. You know what I mean? Oh, sick. That's definitely where I want to go. Like, it, it's just so stupid. They looked at like vague, ambiguous uh, uh, mentions of like certain marginalized identities with no real solutions whatsoever and literally thought that's the reason why Liptard shopped there and conservatives will go and shop elsewhere for the same reason. No, man, it's convenience. And also, you know what's the most convenient thing? Being a fucking monopoly, okay? So, you know, you're not taking down Mundelez International because you decided to go to the same factory where they make the Oreos and be like, my Oreos, on the other hand, look identical, but, like, that are actually fucking racist, you know? It doesn't work that way.
Most people are not like, yeah, I want to make sure my Oreo say the N-word. Like, that doesn't have, it's not how that works. You know what I mean?